This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The auto industry is reeling from the pandemic at the same time it's struggling with the high investment costs for electric cars. So the German government is stepping in to help its automotive industry. It allocated 5 billion euros in four specific areas. It's going to extend subsidies for people who buy EVs until 2025. Consumers can get up to 9,000 euro for buying a BEV or 6,750 euro for a PHEV. It's going to invest in more charging stations. It's going to offer incentives to replace older trucks. And it will help automotive suppliers invest in new technology. Along those lines, BMW is going to move production of the next-gen Mini Countryman out of England and over to Germany. BMW says the Countryman will offer an optional electric powertrain, and that justifies the move. But it's really all about Brexit. As it stands right now, Any vehicle made in the UK and exported to the EU will be subject to a 10% import tax. That's a key reason why Honda and Nissan are talking about abandoning their assembly plants in England. How would you like to pay only a dollar a gallon for gasoline? Four years ago, Bloomberg New Energy Finance predicted oil prices would crash around 2023 or 2024. It predicted EVs would reduce oil demand by 2 million barrels a day. Now a financial think tank called Carbon Tracker predicts oil demand will fall by 70% by 2030. Most of the drop will come from China's conversion to EVs. China is now the world's largest importer of oil, and others say that kind of a drop could easily send gasoline prices to only a buck a gallon in the U.S. market. What's the weather tomorrow? High of 64. Find me the closest coffee shop. 20. Results found. And a date for tonight. Oh, you're good. Introducing dynamic voice recognition in the all-new Hyundai Elantra. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Automakers in Europe already face billions of dollars in fines for not being able to meet emissions targets, and it might not get any easier. The European Commission published a proposal last week to get public feedback on what can be marketed as quote-unquote sustainable. And for a vehicle to be able to get that label, it would need to emit less than 50 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Automakers are already struggling to meet the upcoming goal of having a fleet average of 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer. And as of right now, any vehicle that emits less than 50 grams of CO2 per kilometer earns a so-called super credit, which allows an automaker to count the sale of that vehicle twice. So this new proposal would put even more pressure on automakers. What's more, it also says that by 2026, any sustainable vehicle must be zero emission, meaning hybrid vehicles would lose their green tag. It's hard to imagine that much burden being put on the auto sector, but we'll know soon enough. The finalized rules will kick in before the end of next year. Carlos Ghosn has always maintained his innocence over his arrest by Japanese authorities in November of 2018 for allegedly underreporting his income. He accused Nissan executives and Japanese prosecutors of conspiring to oust him from the company because they feared he was going to merge Nissan with Renault. And now Gowen is getting support from a panel of human rights experts working with the United Nations, who say he was wrongly detained in Japan and that he deserves compensation and other reparations from the Japanese government. It says his arrest was arbitrary, and the panel is calling on Japan to conduct a full and independent investigation of his detention. Gowen claims that he was subject to solitary confinement, long interrogations, and denied access to court pleadings. Nearly a year ago, Gowen fled Japan and escaped to Lebanon. Interpol has issued a wanted notice, 
but it's unlikely he'll be extradited from the country. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, solutions for your journey, Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, and by Hyundai. Ford is taking on online used vehicle retailers like Carvana and Vroom by launching its own digital platform for used vehicle sales. Called Ford Blue Advantage, it allows the automaker's dealers in the U.S. to list and sell used vehicles in a single digital marketplace. The Detroit News reports that the idea was developed with the company's National Dealer Council, and the company will share more details about the platform in the first quarter of 2021. Around 3 million used Ford vehicles are sold every year, but Ford dealers only sell one out of every three of them. So it created the online platform to grab a bigger slice of that market. Ford of Europe is expanding its commercial vehicle offerings. For the first time, a chassis cab version of the Ranger pickup will be sold. It only comes as a single cab setup, but four-wheel drive is standard, and it's powered by a roughly 170-horsepower 2-liter diesel engine. The setup allows for a maximum towing capacity of 3,500 kilograms, or about 7,700 pounds. The new Ranger chassis cab will be available to order in January, and we wonder if it won't be offered in other markets as well. There's a number of North American companies that would have a use for this vehicle, too. But that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again tomorrow.